In a year with big support for historically black colleges across a number of financial and corporate sectors, uh, we can't forget that alumni giving and engagement with HBCUs is also on the rise. Dillard University this week making big headlines with Giving Tuesday, more than $700,000 collected in a single day in their fundraising campaign. Here to discuss that, uh, Brother President of Dillard University, Walter Kimbrough, and Vice President of Institutional Advancement, Mark Barnes. Gentlemen, I appreciate it. Um, Brother Kimbrough, first, uh, I would ask you, uh, to, to see, and, and I think one of the things that you made in your remarks about that particular mark, uh, the fundraising mark was, we started with 36 G's a couple of years ago, and now we're 200% over that. that. That's remarkable. That is remarkable. I mean, from a presidential perspective, what is it like to see that kind of growth in such a short period of time? So, well, first of all, thank you for um, having us on today. You know, when we first the idea was brought to me to say, hey, you know, people are doing Giving Tuesday. We should be involved in this. I said, OK, let's just give it a shot. Let's see. I didn't really know what to expect. So, you know, the first year we got over thirty six thousand dollars. I was like and we didn't really, really lean into it. So I said, oh, OK, well, next year, let's see if we could get 60. And then it was over one hundred thousand dollars. And so that's when I realized, like, we might be on to something. Uh, I think the key factor for us is that I guess he's the great grandson of James Hardy Dillard, for whom we're named after. Um, he jumped in with these matching grants and he mm -hmm. was doing six figure matching grants. And just based on my experience at Philander Smith, people like matching grants. So if I'm able to tell someone you're going to get matched dollar for dollar, people are saying, oh, wow, my gift now has a different level of power. So for the last few years, He's been doing matching grants. And this year he got a couple of his friends to add to the matching grant pile. So when you have that happening at the same time and then you get a board member who works with a family foundation and they add in to Giving Tuesday, your numbers go up. So people got excited about it. We started small uh, and then we just saw the potential and then people got excited about it. And then we were able to make our matches because he would say, well, you have six months to make your match. And we were making the match on that day. So then he was like, OK, cool. Let me, let me keep you know adding to this. And I think that's what happened. So it's sort of has its own synergy right now. Um, it's, it's been great. I think, you know, it's just a feel good day for everybody. But just watching people buy into that has been good, too. Mark, what has been the, the, the effort from uh, and I, I wouldn't call it grassroots. I mean, it, it certainly is is formal communications with stakeholders, alumni, community members, uh, corporate partners, all that. But what is it that you think that that provides the, the 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 catalyst for folks to say yes, I'm all in, and however I can give, I'm going to give. So that either that's online, it's mailing in a check, it, it's something. What do you think that that has been most effective in your perspective in getting those folks involved? Yeah, it's really been the strategy that we've employed. Uh, we have a really good team. Let me start with that. Let me start there because our team is really dug into this. They bought into it, uh, and they give a thousand percent effort on this not just for Giving Tuesday, but in the months leading up to it. So we really manage Giving Tuesday like a campaign. Uh, so people see you know, all the work that we do for the 24 hours of giving, uh, but really that work has started several months before. So we're, you know, we're talking to people, uh, we're, we're giving them the heads up that this day is coming. Uh, we're asking people to think about what their contributions uh, might be. Uh, Dr. Kimbrough mentioned the matching gift. We really secure that matching gift uh, ahead of time so that we can have people preparing and thinking about how they want their contributions matched uh, with that with that matching opportunity. So uh, this, this really is about how we strategize a campaign over a number of months uh, that leads up to those 24 days of giving. It's been really uh, a strategy that we put in place uh, that has engaged uh, alumni, friends, our board, uh, faculty and staff, and even students contribute to this. So it, it's really been, uh, uh, like you said, a grassroots effort uh, that has produced great results for us. Talk about the level of education that's necessary for something like like a micro campaign like Giving Tuesday. So typically in fundraising, you're you're asking and targeting folks in very specific ways. Give to this. That'll help our endowment. Give to that. That will provide student scholarships. Give to this. That supports athletic support. What is it like to, to construct something around a one day effort to say, let's give as much as you can, but we're still abiding by rules of we don't necessarily want a bunch of stuff to go to restricted 
uh, but we want we want unrestricted access. We want things to, to to fall a certain way. Is it is it the same kind of approach for a one day campaign as it would be for a capital campaign or just year round fundraising? It, it, it's actually a very very similar concept. So, uh, you know, I you know we talk about restricted versus unrestricted, but we also talk about budget relief. So some, something can be restricted, but also helping to relieve the budget. So for example, our SAFE fund, uh, which is the student assistance for financial emergencies. Uh, we started this, uh, Dr. Kimbrough got this started uh, when he started, as his, his presidency started back in 2013 is when we started the fund. And that fund has been uh, around, uh, the, the purpose of it has been to help our students pay their gap, their funding gap. It's fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, whatever it might be. Uh, we've been able to raise about two and a half million dollars, really, uh, yeah, just over two hundred two and a half million dollars for that fund. And we have been able to help literally over uh, two thousand students uh, over the you know in those years to be able to really you know fund those gaps for them. Uh, well, that resonates with a lot of the of our donors, particularly our alumni who remember when they were in that situation uh, when they were students here. So. Uh, you know, really a lot of our strategy is about connecting uh, those whys that you talked about, those, those different reasons um, in terms of, you know, what they want to give to. Uh, we target them in some aspects, but we, we provide, you know, a range of things that they can give to. And many of those things are, you know, are restricted, but they really do go to relieve the budget because, you know, think about the safe fund, you know, if we can you know, help a student with $2,500 on their balance, that really is money that's going to the bottom line for the institution. So uh, we really approach it, you know, it, it, so it's restricted because it's the safe, but it helps the institution in terms of its bottom line. Doc, uh, we've seen an increase in, in trustees, regents, um, rectors given to HBCUs and particularly at small institutions and smaller private institutions. Is that, is that, a cultivation process from the presidential level that says, hey, you know, you got you got to put your money where your mouth is. You know, obviously you're giving a lot in terms of leadership. You're giving a lot in terms of networking and connections. But it is a powerful thing for a board to say we are one at 100 percent giving or to have a, a formal board member or emeritus board member say, I'm going to match everything that comes in today. Is that a, a cultivation strategy or is that something the board and the president discussed? mutually or is it the board exclusively how does that kind of work for folks who are listening to say how do we get our board more involved in the in the philanthropic effort right i you know i think we all have been engaged um we've had since i've been here we've had two really engaged board chairs um the first joyce roche who um she had been president of girls inc and uh, was on the board of a lot of corporations in fact I think last fall, um, she rolled off of AT&T's board and in her honor, they gave $250,000 um, to the university um, for our business program. So even as a trustee emeritus, she has still been very engaged in that process. So some of it is having those conversations that the board chair will lead. Um, Mark and his team will have conversations and we do our board retreats. We talk about that. So, I mean, we've been pretty consistent to be at 100 percent board giving. But then they see a lot of those good examples of board members who will step up to say, you know, we're doing this, you know, UNCF mass ball event and we have a, a certain goal that we have to reach. And you have trustees that will step up for that. Um, so I think part of it here is, I, I mean, there really is, you know, I mean, you, you pay attention to what's happening. The board culture at Diller is very good. I mean, it's a really good board. It was easy for me to come from another place and meet with board members and just like, oh, man, they get it. This this is a great job because the, the board culture. So it wasn't going in and fighting and people looking jockey for a position. It was people there saying we know what our purpose is and they work with each other and the institution. So I think part of it is we got to talk about how do we build those kind of board cultures that are looking for opportunities, you know, both hard cash and other opportunities for students, you know, and for the institution. And so I think that's I think our board culture is very healthy. Um, and so I think that's a part of our success. It's, it's just a healthy board culture. And, you know, everybody didn't have that. So I'm I'm thankful for that, that we do have that culture. This is um, I know I know you guys are, are you know, just days out from, you know, kind of tallying up, you know, and, and doing a profile on what kind of people give and how much they gave. Um, is, is there a specific group that stands out 
in terms of their not just giving Tuesday, but that you see kind of emerging as a as a key demographic for your philanthropic efforts? Is it younger alumni where, where we seen at some schools? Obviously, our, our older graduates are the ones with first of all, they got the money. <laughs> and second of all, they probably got more more uh, flexibility in giving you when they're retired and things like that. But are there is there a specific group of people that you say, you know, we we can bet on this group being active in terms of supporting the institution year year after year? You know, that's a that's a very good question. Um, if you look at, you know, so we did seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars. And if you really slice it uh, and, and analyze the numbers, you will see a great mix of, of different demographics. So we have the older, so we have a number of major gifts in uh, within that seventy seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars. But I would say the the number that we've really been pleased with in terms of the increase would be our younger donors and the engagement that we've been able to do through social media. Uh, our and by younger, I say the people who have graduated within the last ten years. Um, you know, so for you know the on Giving Tuesday, our alumni percentage participation percentage jumped about 4%. Uh, and I would attribute at least a, about a, maybe a quarter of that uh, to alumni who graduated within the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, so that that group, which has always been in, in the years that I've been at Dillard, has always been the toughest group you know, to, to reach in terms of, of giving. But what we've been able to do, and we're really fortunate to have a president that is really engaged on social media. So he really amplifies our message and I always tell people that you know, he has more Twitter followers than the institution itself has. So when we get a message out and that he is able to amplify that message for us, it really reaches a lot more people uh, and, and people are responding to that. And, uh, and so, you know, we have a really good social media strategist uh, who puts the right types of messages out in the right ways on the different platforms. And, and that really is reaching the young alumni. So while we have a really good mix of major gifts and smaller gifts in the number, um, I think the group that has really responded to this uh, in terms of the group that hadn't responded before would be that group that graduated within the last 10 to 15 years. And, I, I, you know, I would add that, you know, it seems like every year out of the blue, there is some kind of major gift that just popped up. Somebody we didn't know. We're like, who is this? Yes. So I think, you know, doing it enough times and people start to get the message, then just somebody pops out of the blue with twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars. It's like, who is it? And it could be an alum who's never given before. They just show up. And so that then becomes another opportunity then to start cultivating long term relationships with folks like that. But I mean, that's been a consistent, you know, every year there's just somebody that comes out of the blue with this major gift. And you're like, who is this person? Where where have they been? So that's been really good, too. So that, I think that really helps give us momentum. Yeah, that, that, that actually happened this year from a telephone call from uh, from our phone banking. So that and we hear that so often, like every now and then, even if it's not a graduate, somebody will just who has, has seen something about an institution or seen something about Dillard will call and say, that moved me. Let me give you 100 grand. And so it. it you can't predict that you can't strategize about that but as you mentioned how do you how do you use that to reach other folks with similar means and say you know somebody i didn't even know gave us a lot of money so i know you can can you come in at the same level i think the key to that uh, jared has been and dr kimbo talks about this all the time the consistency of our messaging and and so when we're talking about the things that are happening at dillard you know how are we telling our story uh, I think we've done a really good job of telling the Dillard story, not just for this Giving Tuesday campaign, but throughout the year and using, you know, uh, emails to alumni, social media and all the other ways that we've been able to engage people, uh, but being consistent in our messaging. And so when people start to start to see what's happening here, then you start getting those kind of uh, organic contributions coming in because it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? I heard about something that y'all are doing that you know, you know, I heard that your pre-law program is like really producing uh, these great um, uh, graduates or the physics uh, students are getting PhDs. Like, they start resonating uh, because of the messaging that, that we're doing, but that has to be consistent in throughout the year. Yeah. And then the final question, you know, uh, Brother President, you, you say often, oh, we made our goal, let's double it up next year. Are you going to say in front of your vice president right now? We going we going you going to double up seven hundred. We haven't had that conversation. Well, look, I, I think I, I think I ran off one staff member because when we counted five hundred thousand dollars, I was like, she was like, "Oh Lord, he's going to see a million next year." I was like, well, "Why not?" I mean, it's 
I, you know, I mean, this was unexpected. I, you know, for us, we had a half a million dollar goal, which is really solid for us because a lot of places they were doing goals. I mean, not just HBCUs, lots of schools, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars. I'm like, that's not a goal. That's not even a stretch. So for us then to be able to do that this year, you know, like I said, I was looking at five hundred thousand. I, I mean, a million is not me. You know, that's not unreasonable. You know, why not? Why not look at a million? I mean, like just to have the goal. And like I said, it's not that it's unre. And if we don't make it, that's fine. At least say we're trying to stretch ourselves. These are the kinds of things, particularly when we know we have a major donor who is now finding people. So when we can report back to him and then, you know, his check will come in, I'll call him, we'll follow up. He starts to expand his circle. That's what you're talking about. He's saying, look, they're really serious there. They're doing these kind of things. They met the match. Those guys might pop up and say, well, I gave you all 50 this year. I might do 100. So it's not unreasonable to say we might be able to do a million dollars. I think that's but I, I think just having those goals and pushing ourselves, even if we don't reach them, I mean, it's, you know, the whole Benjamin Mays is saying is, you know, not to have a goal. So mm -hmm. why not have a goal to stretch yourself to say, we think we could do a million dollars. I think we all got to push ourselves because we can't we can't just rely on governmental funding for everything. We have capacity. We can support our institutions and our own programs. And so that's that's the message that I think people are hearing. Um, people in the community here. It. It's like Mark said, just the messaging. We hear from a range of people, some that don't have any connection to Dillard at all. Uh, my mama's going to send Mark $10,000 every year at Forgiving Tuesday. And she'll tell me, like, make sure Mark got his check. I mean, that's so you get lots of people that are really engaged in what the, the institution is doing. Um, so I like I said, it's a feel good day. We're excited. You know, and we're still looking long term. How do we keep moving? our alumni giving percentage up. When I got here, Jared, we were at 4%, four. The last two years prior to the COVID year, we were at 23%. We dropped to about 13, 15 last year. We should get back over 20 this year. But to me, that's the, the long game. You're, you're over 20% alumni giving every year. And that's harder for Mark and his team because every year, if you do it right, you add more people to your pool because you have these graduates. And, you know, it's tough for somebody five five years or less out of school. They like they still worry about student loans. So when Dylan says, send me some money, they're like, man, I got this student loan. I'm not giving y'all any money. So but we had some of them who graduated within the last five years, one that gave almost two thousand dollars. So it, that's not impossible. Um, so those are the, the long term strategies to really develop a culture of giving, uh, which I think is very important for all of our institutions. So that's that's what we're trying to do. And as you mentioned, the rate is just as important as the amount, uh, particularly for corporate cultivation and, and showcasing the, the dedication to the institution. Brothers, I appreciate your time this morning. And just a reminder, you know, we know HBCU giving is not just on one Tuesday a year. So let folks know uh, how they can give to Dillard online and other other ways. Absolutely. Uh, give.dillard.edu is the best and easiest way to give. It's a really simple process. Uh, you can always call my office at 504-816-4359, and we'll have, we're happy to talk to you on the phone as well. And we know folks still like to write those checks, and so we take those too. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 Gentilly I'm Boulevard. I'm <laughs> it's a check, so. 2601 Gentilly Boulevard, New Orleans, Louisiana, 701 -2 